agriculture, the biggest industry in the world. But by 2050, it's said that global food production will have to double in order to feed all the people on the planet. Brand ambassadors. Uh, organizations, WWF. A challenge that's grabbing the world's attention, from startups eager to close the food gap to big time investors who believe the industry is ripe for change. Investments in agri food tech grew $10 billion in 2017, up 29% from the year before. Government agencies like the Agri Food and Veterinary Authority of Singapore have also been sowing seeds to bolster food security. They actually advise us on our scalability, how are we going to build this more intensively in a closed environment. So they're actually giving a lot of grants now to farms that are able to scale up. Eric Ng built the first vertical fish farm in Singapore. From six ponds, he plans to scale up production to 96 by 2020 by building this $52 million mega farm. In Singapore, our land is expensive. We need to build this with a smaller footprint to produce more. So to go into intensive farming, I think sustainable farming is the only way to go. Vertical farming is blooming in Singapore, growing from 12 farms in 2016 to 34 in 2018, according to AVA. With inside of a building, the environments are typically the same. What actually happened when we first went out and spoke with the AVA about taking a space inside of a building, uh, that was very new for them. So the biggest challenge that we had was finding ways to rewrite the policies that would enable us to grow inside of this building. AVA is also encouraging players to test the waters overseas. We are hoping that you know, we can build more satellites overseas and we can build this model into urban cities, closer to the community, the consumers. So for Japan, we already have a farm in Hiroshima. Uh, Brunei, we are looking into it now and um, we'll be doing an expansion in Brunei as well. Vertical farming is going to be a supplement to all farming systems and it will really decentralise the food value chain as it's seen today. Because we can grow the impossible crops locally, vertical farms will be used to bring those products that can't be grown into markets so communities can have great products like temperate products all year round. Uh, and then we can work with the outdoor farmers to help them integrate smart technology, very bespoke to their footprints, um, to help them optimize their farming. I'm Christine Tan and thanks for watching Managing Asia. Do check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thanks for watching.